Hey everyone, today we're going to do an interesting experiment. Uh, I don't know if you've seen something like this before, but uh, a couple of new nodes have been released into the Comfy environment uh, under the Comfy role uh, custom node that I want to show how easy it is to create memes as well as uh, comic strips. So if you ever wanted to create a comic strip before, very, very, very easy to do. Um, as well as these meme. And honestly, when we say meme, you can actually use this for any sort of titling or uh, captioning uh, for your images that you create. Uh, we're going to start very basic uh, to start, and then we're going to go into a more advanced uh, exercise with creating a full comic strip. Uh, but to start, you'll want to make sure your comfy environment is fully updated. Uh, and by doing so, just go to your manager and into uh, update all uh, or even update comfy and uh, from there you'll also want to uh, install a few other nodes as well so if you go to the manager you can kind of see nice little trick here if you go to the badge and go to nickname you can see which custom nodes you'll need so in this case uh, you'll need the following nodes you'll need efficiency nodes comfy roll node the impact pack as well if you look at the previous text uh, video I had put together, you'll see exactly how you can get different fonts and, and get them to appear, etc. cetera. Um, but what you'll see here in this very basic flow, uh, sampler, and then from there, uh, we're gonna go into a new node. And this new node is called the Simple Meme Template. It's part of Comfy Roll. And you can see I have kind of text on the top, text on the bottom. And you can see easily here, this is the final output. Very, very easy you uh, can include just text on the top or text on the bottom or even neither uh, and you should be good to go if you want to just even put uh, you know colored bars on on both top and bottom or you know vice versa as well as if you want to just include text without the bar you have that ability as well so um, so that's uh, the text piece of it font like i said uh, in previous videos so you can include in your font directory uh, in the custom uh, nodes folder under the the uh, comfy role you can include any fonts you want and you just have to refresh the page and then that font will appear in the list here uh, so if you don't see your font here most likely you have to make sure that you did put your font in the font directory and then refresh the page uh, and then you should be good to go uh, and then also like the other video, right, you have different color options here. One thing you will not notice yet uh, is a custom color, right? So these are all kind of like the kind of bar colors that you'd want to include. But if you want to include a, a custom hex value for the color, can't do that yet, but that will be in the future. Um, but for a meme, it's pretty quick, uh, straight and forward. And then finally, the top uh, in terms of the bar options, uh, where you would want your actual white bar to appear. Again, this is optional. In this case, for this meme, I included both the top and the bottom. So that's why you see the white uh, bar on the top and the bottom. So that's pretty easy uh, example to run through, uh, but it's great in a very uh, quick fix to create a meme or create a, a fun little uh, image with some captioning as well. Now, the big question, of course, comes, well, I have many images I want to uh, kind of have in a grid or have in a sort of out uh, larger format, what do I do to, to get them to kind of stack together? And so this is where uh, a couple other custom nodes have been uh, introduced. And I'm going to show you the final format first because it's pretty exciting. You can see we've created a full comic strip here, including a title and byline as well. Uh, and you can see if you were to take each of these windows separately, right, each of these is that uh, meme that we were talking about, and we're just stacking them together with some other nodes. So we're gonna show you step-by-step step how to do that. So if I go here and you can see, again, high level, I basically have a styler, a loader, and a sampler for each of these items. Now, you can make this more efficient if you want to use the same uh, model for each of uh, these images. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily need to have a loader for each, and that'll actually save you uh, some memory time, uh, which is great. But, uh, but in this case, I wanted to keep it very, very flexible. So if, let's say, on the second or third image, you wanted to use a different you know, SDXL model, or if you wanted to have a few different parameters to differentiate it, you have the ability to do so. 
And so you can also see, you kind of give it the nice kind of cartoony look. I used the Mile High uh, Disney animation sort of styling. Of course, it's not using real Disney uh, information. It's, it's a simulation, but you get the sense that you can uh, uh, really kind of modify your imagery to be photorealistic or impressionistic or whatever that style is. And there's really hundreds of different types of stylings you can have in that mile high styler. It's really, really great tool. Um, and so in that case, uh, back to what we did, we have you know, each of these panels is an individual render, right? You can see them kind of all the way down the list here. And if I zoom into one, right, it's each one has its individual prompt. So in this case, we have the cartoon of a 20 year old woman, et cetera, et cetera, different expressions, et cetera. And that brings you just with the image. And then of course, each of these renders goes into that meme template we were just talking about. And because we want it to be a comic strip, we didn't want any text on the top. Uh, we just want it to appear on the bottom. So you could see, I kept it blank on the top and I put text on the bottom uh, with that bar option at the end, just showing bottom. So we don't want any bar to appear at the top. So each of these items uh, actually filters into or pipes into uh, this really exciting tool or node called Make Image Batch. And when you first put this down, it'll start with uh, just one or two items here. And as you add additional images to this batch, it'll just increase, 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 increase. So you can really add as many as you want, which is awesome, makes it a lot simpler. And this will feed into a grid panel. And the cool thing about this is then you don't have to worry about, oh, am I doing four columns here and three images here and whatever, you're keeping it very, very basic. You're just saying, I want this to go four columns across and just keep you know, repeating them all the way down. So if you have, let's say uh, 12 images that you put in, it'll automatically put a third row in for you, uh, easy peasy. Uh, additionally, you have other sort of formatting options for each of the uh, panel boxes, right? So you can see that I have a uh, a white uh, kind of border around it uh, with some black uh, thickness color even around that. And so you can see here, right, the white is actually these kind of spaces in between. So I wanted to kind of give it a, not a smushed side of feel, kind of give it a little breathing space uh, as well. And so that's all going to feed into this larger item right here, which is another new node it's called page layout, CR, comfy roll, page layout. And this lets you adjust the much larger parameters of your entire, in this case, comic strip. So you could have a header and a footer, which in fact I'm doing, right? My header is the title, my footer is my byline. And you have lots of different alignment options and a lot more formatting options, again, around how you want it to look and feel. Now, this is all optional. Right? You don't have to include all those attributes. If you want to keep it super simple, just use the default, let it render, and then you can start to tweak it to, to give you the feel that you want. And the last thing I want to show here, which is really, really great, is another new custom node called uh, Comfy Roll Image Border. So around you can do this on, around individual images as well as through uh, kind of this larger page, which I've done in this case, is doing a, a sort of kind of a background sort of layer, right? In, in the past, uh, you can see my magazine template uh, video. It was a, a kind of a very complex way of, of generating a background sort of border uh, behind the image. This is much, much easier. You basically just say, what's the thickness? What's the color? Uh, and you can uh, provide a custom color as well, and you're done. And it, it's really great because now you can, again, do it on individual images. You could do it uh, around uh, page layouts, et cetera. And you can see the, the results are great. So hope this was very helpful. I also have three other resources to show you. Uh, lots of new interest in building comfy uh, UI uh, workflows. And so, you know, the best way to build workflows is to learn and to learn about where those workflows uh, exist and how you can see them and try them and also use them as a learning tool for you to build your own workflow skill set. So I have three different websites to show you. Uh, first one is called 
uh, and by the way, these are not sponsored. Uh, first is called Comfy Workflows. Uh, this is a great website. Um, very simple interface, lets you basically filter and search. And when you find a particular workflow you like, you can click on it and it'll show you a preview of what it looks like. You can also see kind of node-wise, you know, what this all looks like as well. So you can see how complex it is or if there's particular things, you can download it. I think you have to log in uh, to also comment and tag and etc. I think they also have a generation engine as well. Uh, so that's a great website. Next one, of course, is Civitai, right? Pretty common place to find both models and workflows and images and the like. Uh, if you go to your models area, you can then go to tool and tool is a great place then to then search for different sort of uh, workflows as well. You see, I have a few of mine in here as well, which you can feel free to download, it's all free. Um, and then the final one, openart.ai, another great workflow site. They, they're actually running a contest right now, which is great. So if you want to uh, try your hand in building some workflows and submitting it to be judged in a contest, uh, it's running right now. And I think there's actually some cash prizes as well for you to potentially win. Um, but again, another great site, if I was to generate uh, from there, it shows you also the visual feel of what it's looking like. There's ways to download, like, share, etc., review those workflows as well. So uh, very similar type of features between the three sites. I think uh, over time we'll see how they can differentiate themselves more, um, but they're all very valuable and they're all very, uh, they're very great uh, for helping you learn, right? At the end of the day, we're trying to make sure people are, are just learning and, and seeing all the power that this platform can do. And I think this is a great way to do it. So thanks so much for your time and we'll talk to you soon.